the recent AI race is getting insanely interesting by the day. Google I.O. annual developer conference came with lots of interesting new packages for the Bard, which is a program this tech giant might finally use to redeem itself and stay ahead of the AI race. Now let's get right into looking at some of these mind-blowing features that might finally start turning away attention from the chat GPT. One thing worthy of note that came with the announcement of the new features is the elimination of the waitlist when it comes to accessing the program. This move has been lauded by many users and might just be one of the basic attributes that will aid the development of the program at a faster rate. The limited access to GPT programs and other similar AI programs limits user feedback. And of course, as we already know, these programs depend largely on user feedback for their improvements. Thumbs up to Google on this feature. Just as anyone might have anticipated, Google is going all in when it comes to using the large amount of resources that they've already built over several decades, being one of the front players when it comes to tech innovations. Bard users can now easily export responses to queries to other Google-affiliated applications such as Google Docs and Gmail. There's no doubt that this is definitely one feature that will come in handy for many users. We all know that it is basically time-consuming sometimes switching between these apps to paste a document. Now, another major change that Google announced at this event is the integration of a different language model to power Bard. There has been a switch from the Lambda large language model to the Palm 2. And actually, many users are starting to say that the user experience from Google Bard is now much more like what you will get with the new version of the ChatGPT. The switch, according to Google, came after the Lambda language model had an inferior performance to the Palm 2 during testing. And we definitely expect more updates on this as the performance is optimized. And we should most probably note at this point that the Google Bard is unavailable to EU member countries. Many say that this move must have been a take home from the observation of the ChatGPT launch. This is because launching in these countries sparks up some regulation issues that basically slow the development of these programs. And as you might already know, it is just about who can speed up and give the most enticing features that will keep them in the front row of the AI race. And Google is definitely not opting for any delay. However, people in the EU member states can easily take a backdoor to the program using VPNs. Maybe these restrictions will be lifted in the coming months. Google has also let the users who are interested in the Bard know that the program has so far been launched in only three languages, namely English, Japanese, and Korean. However, the availability of the program spreads over 180 countries. They are looking to expand this with subsequent updates where the program will be available in as many as 40 other languages. I guess we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed on this and hope Google delivers as soon as possible. Unlike the rival program from Microsoft, Bing, Google Bard appears more like the OpenAI ChatGPT in performance. Instead of working like a search engine, it basically acts like a chatbot that we are already familiar with. However, with Bard still in its developmental stage, they've integrated a Google it button at the end of every query in case the user needs to verify anything. Google has reiterated that the Bard is not yet fully operational and has some irregularities that might not mirror exactly the intentions of the company. Clever enough, Google seems to have been proactive and included the word experiment next to the logo when you open the program. Any user should be immediately alerted to proceed with caution. And in case for any reason you missed that, there is also this warning prompt pinned once you open the program. One insanely attractive feature that Google has packed into this program is the ability to create tables with this AI. It's quite an interesting feature, and if you think that's the best thing, they take it up a notch with the ability to easily fit these tables into a spreadsheet. Google is really making use of their years of innovation this time around to make the competition appear a lot less interesting. It actually seems that the Google Bard was worth the wait. Now here we have asked the AI to create a table of top car producers in the US and Germany, and it handles this pretty well. We went ahead to extend the table by asking it to include the showroom locations for each brand, as an addition to the already existing table. The ease with which these instructions were carried out is simply jaw-dropping, and the fact that we are to expect further developments in this is exceptional. Another interesting move is the coding with the Bard feature. This is most significant when we consider that this will be a very interesting aspect for many, weighing on the fact that code generation is very much what many are into these days. The Google Bard has integrated over 20 programming languages, which will definitely be a worthy challenge for the ChatGPT, if at all, it has access to that many resources. The efficiency of this feature is one that remains to be seen with subsequent usage. 
And here you can see a query I made for Bard to use Python in generating a simple website for a fashion brand. The speed and efficiency with which it carries out this task with details on the step-by-step -step procedure is nothing short of amazing. Furthermore, with not many highlights or instances at the I.O. annual developer conference held by Google, it was stated that an improvement has been made in the aspects of math and logic abilities of the program. I guess this will be left to the users to detect these improvements over time and feedback will provide insight as to how efficient the program can be in these aspects. Plugins are one of the very enticing features that come with the Bard. This is Google running a quick one on the limited access that the GPT program has had on their own plugins. This clever move automatically makes the platform more useful while throwing the program open to accommodate a wide range of users. And the integration of plugins such as Spotify, YouTube, and many others automatically optimizes the use of these programs and make them more interesting to use. This is a really cool move by Google, and we expect to see this play out positively as many people will become more and more dependent on the AI to carry out pretty much most of their tasks with much more ease. The next crazy feature that has just been integrated with the Bard is Prompt with Images feature. This is a feature that Google hopes will be able to read images on the platform. So you can basically upload a picture to Bard and ask a series of questions about it and you will get your response. Here we see the demonstration that Google gave on this feature, where the image of two dogs was taken and the AI was able to identify the breeds and even write a joke based on the picture. One thing about this, however, is that this feature is not yet available to users but we are definitely sure to see this happen soon enough. This feature where the Bard is able to read images is obviously an integration of the function of the Google Lens into the Bard. Again, Google is taking every advantage it has to stay ahead in this AI race. Another feature that might sound like what we just talked about, but means a totally different thing, is visual response integration. This is basically the ability to include images in response to your queries on the Bard. This feature is still, however, in development and not yet integrated with the system. The only thing that you can find when you input queries that are meant to come back with images is that the system creates a bracket and in it, it gives a description of the image that is supposed to be included in that response. To demonstrate this, here is a response where I asked the AI to show the location of Harvard University on a map. It basically writes this where the image is meant to be shown, saying image of a map showing the location of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, United States. What the AI does here is that it basically gives all necessary location, details, just that there is no actual image as it should be. This is however an early stage for the program and we hope to see more advancements in this. Now remember how we said earlier that the Bard now includes different plugins and extensions? One of the really amazing additions is the Adobe Firefly. This is one addition that I really think speaks boldly of the steps that the tech giant is taking to remain relevant. And to familiarize you with Adobe Firefly, it's basically an independent AI program that is really, really great at generating images and creating many other AI images. This is really a step in the right direction given that the company Adobe really has it when it comes to different image alteration software. And definitely with subsequent upgrades, we are likely to see things that we never thought possible coming from this partnership with Adobe. All these are definitely going to see the usage of Google Bard rise significantly. With all these new features that we see different AI companies rolling out, there's no doubt that with time, some of the most exceptional features that we thought were really mind-blowing about the ChatGPT might just become some common features. We hope that in the coming months that OpenAI will make most of their features generally accessible and more optimized. This is absolutely necessary if they're going to stay relevant in this race. The Bard is surely going to have an influx of new users, especially when they fully activate these features that they just introduced. Do turn on the notification bell and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We look forward to bringing up-to-date information on other AI trends.